Hello, hello Stampin' Friends. This is Julia Mazur with Simply She Stamps coming to you today on Facebook here um, at noon on a Wednesday for a little lunch and learn. I am going to be using watercolor pencils today to um, color this beautiful card. Well, I think beautiful. <laughs> it was a card I created for a swap that um, for an event that I went to down in New Orleans late last month in August and I wanted to show you how to use the watercolor pencils. Now we are going to use the Apple Harvest stamp set and what's really nice is that in the month of September you can get coordinating dies to go with those um, and you use these to cut out your stamped images and we also have some other dies that create um, die cuts, I guess, if you, and, and emboss, dry emboss. So I don't have a sample using these today, but we are going to use um, the one die to cut out the apples. So that is called Perfect Partners, and there are six stamp sets with coordinating dies. I don't know if you can see all of these that are available through September. Um, most of these sets are in the um, annual catalog or the Janu I'm sorry, July through December mini catalog. Okay, and you can find this on my website at www.jmazer.stampinup.net. All right, so let's get to it. I have a piece of Poppy Parade cardstock for my card base. Okay, and then what I did was I took this beautiful apple stamp and I inked it up in soft suede and I stamped it twice on this piece of cardstock which I believe is um, three let me grab mine should have wrote these down um, it is three and a quarter I think no three and a half by four okay and what I did with this piece as you can see here, is I stamped it twice in the soft suede, and then I put the um, uh, Stitch With Whimsy dies. I love these, this just adds a little bit of stitching on your cardstock. Don't know if you can see that stitching right there. So I ran that through my machine, and then I got this piece. That's gonna be our base piece. Then I stamped it again in the soft suede ink, and I used the die. Just like this ran it through my cut and emboss machine and I got this piece beautifully cut out so I didn't have to sit there and fussy cut okay I do have an image stamped on soft sea foam in the early espresso and the cute little flower the apple blossom to go along with that that's gonna be our greeting and some of our espresso uh, ribbon here that I'm going to use for uh, behind that Okay, so what I did was I took my uh, Poppy Parade card base here and I inked up this stamp in some Poppy Parade ink. I stamped it once and then stamped it a couple times over here. Just gives it a little bit of um, texture. And now I want to show you how I colored these. So this is my um, fully colored with the watercolor pencils. And I want to show you the difference here, and this is what I'm going to demonstrate in just a moment. Uh, this I colored with the watercolor pencils with just one color, just one color green, one color red. These I layered on the um, colors with different colored pencils. So as you can tell, you get a lot more dimension when you layer on that color, and I kind of forget that with the watercolor pencils. I haven't use them lately so I pulled them out what I like about the watercolor pencils is that they are portable so I was coloring on the airplane and in the airport okay let me see here if I can find my live here see if um, see if I've come up on my Facebook page here and see if I can see any comments there we go let's see if you have any comments um, Put them in the chat and I'll try to answer them as we go along and if you're watching on the replay I will answer them as well. Okay so here's our um, focal point and what I started doing is I started coloring the green leaves and I'm using the darker garden green and 
you may not be able to tell, but there's some shading here that the artist who drew this um, included. And so I always use that as a guide. So I'm gonna add some of the dark and I'm using a very light touch. That's the key. Well, it depends on what kind of look you want with your watercolor pencils. But for my project here, I want a pretty light, ton light touch. I'm just kind of going over the shading and then the veins of the leaves. So that extra shading that the artists put in there and then just kind of out, uh, I don't wanna say outline, but go over the veins in the leaf or each leaf in all the leaves. Um, I also, this is kind of like the shadow. So I'm also putting some of that darker green behind the apple there on the leaf, if you can tell. Okay, and I did I, um, the rest off camera so you could see. Now I'm going to take the granny apple green and again, light touch, and I'm just kind of coloring in circles and shading the rest of the leaf. Now these pencils I just sharpened. I, with this look that I'm going for, I actually kind of like my... Um, pencils duller, <laughs> kind of flat. It's easier to, quicker to color it in and easier not to use a heavy hand. Now um, with watercolor pencils, you can also add water and I'll show you on my sample there. I actually, for these swap cards, I did not add any water. I just left it as is with the pencil look. And one reason being is I kind of liked on the apples, as you'll see, I liked the lines because it reminded me of those gala apples, which are my favorite apples. I haven't gone apple picking yet this year. Hopefully we'll get that in. I haven't been actually picking for a couple years. Okay, I just want to make sure that you can see what I'm doing here. I'm just kind of working in circles, light touch. It kind of, if you, when I go over that darker green, it kind of melds together. And again, it's this layering of the colors that gives you that great dimension. Now, when you um, do add water, if you would like to your colored images with the watercolor pencils, um, you can use our blender pen, you can use a paintbrush or our water brushes that have the water in the barrel. Now I did stamp this in soft suede ink, so that is not waterproof. So if I did add water, my soft suede uh, would blur, so the lines would blur. So that's another reason that I am not adding any water to my colored images with my watercolor pencils. Um, I wanted a softer look for my stamped images. Now you also could color your leaves with the lighter color first and then go back and add in the darker color. And sometimes I do that if once I color over the darker uh, parts with uh, the lighter color and I want some more shading, I go back and kind of add a little bit more, which you definitely can do. Uh, I did start with the darker color because sometimes you, if you cover color over the artist's shading, you can't always see uh, all that shading in detail. Okay, so there are our leaves. I'm going to take the brown pencil now. I think it's early espresso and I'm just gonna quickly with a light touch, color in the branch. And you can always add more color. Oh, I see, I forgot a leaf there. Better go back. So with these very narrow branches here, that's when I would want my <laughs> very sharpened pencil. You know, I love the look of watercolor and if you follow me or have stamped with me, you know how much I love the look of watercolor, but I cannot watercolor on my own. I've taken classes, so this is why I like watercoloring 
stamped images. Okay, and again, you can just add a little bit more pressure to get um, a darker color. Let me grab this green real quick to get that leaf behind the apple. Okay, so that's our leaves and branches. Now the apples. Here's my trick. I have three colors that I'm going to use. Um, by the way, I am using both sets of watercolor pencils. They're assortment one and also assortment two. They really are a great deal. And like I said, they travel well. This is just a pencil case that I got it, you know, big box store. And um, what I like is it's divided, so I have a pencil with an eraser and my blender pen and a bigger eraser stuck in there. And um, it just travels really nicely. No water needed, all that kind of stuff. Anyhow, back to this. I have um, my Daffodil Delight, the Real Red, and the Cherry Cobbler. All right, so I'm going to start with the Daffodil Delight, and I'm going to use a very, very light hand. And I'm going to just put a little bit of a highlight as you can see, I'm kind of going in a circular motion. I don't want, you know, to see too much of my lines. And I feel like with a circular motion, it's easier not to get those lines. Now, with these apples, there's lots of shading that the artist put in there and you kind of decide where you want your highlight, where's the light coming from. Um, this is more of just the different colors of the apple. Now I'm going to start with my cherry cobbler. Oh, see this how flat that is. <laughs> I'm going to go over here and I'm going to add the darker color to the edges and this little apple where the artist put the shading. So kind of on the edges and a light touch because I don't want to see too much of those lines. If you were going to use a blender pen, you would, um, or the watercolor painter, uh, you would be able to kind of lose the, those lines that you made with your pencil when you add water and kind of uh, blend it all together. But since I'm not going to add any water, I need to be very careful. So that's why I'm using a light hand, okay? So again, I'm starting with just the edges in the darker color, the cherry cobbler, and not really, you know, using lines, not really circles, but kind of rounded to go with the curve of the apple. And I can always go back and add some. Um, I am going to add a little bit of shading here in the darker color because it's under the leaf. And you'll see when I use the real red, how much um, they kind of blend into each other. And the darker color, more color you want, the harder you would press. I'm just trying to avoid any big lines. Okay. Can you see what I've done so far? I've used the cherry cobbler to um, kind of go along the edges and highlight the shading that the artist did. Now I'm going to take my real red. See, nice and sharp there, so I need to make sure I'm using a really, really light hand. You know, I'm pressing pretty hard here. This is a light hand, okay? And you can just keep going over um, to get more of that color. All right, so we're going to start here. And I'm just going to fill in the rest of my apple. Now you see here with my apple, I did do some strokes like lines. And I felt that worked okay with my apples because I feel it looks like that the Gala apple that you can kind of see the stripes. And that touch of yellow just makes a world of difference. And I can just keep layering on my color there and again kind of rounded lines if that makes sense <laughs> you know I'm not coloring horizontally or on the diagonal I'm trying to follow that natural grain if you will of the fruit okay and you can just add as much color as you'd like 
or just keep adding more color. Okay, you'll see here, just kind of doing those rounded lines up and down, up and down. Kind of melt those colors together. It's kind of hard with this one. Just kind of blending the two sections together. Oh, see, I used a little heavy hand there so you can see how I got that kind of bold line. See, light hand. And then if you want to go back and make things darker, go back with a darker color. You know, that's what I was just trying to do, just trying to make it darker. And sometimes you just need to grab that darker color. Now, like I said, if you followed me, you know I love watercoloring. And um, I usually use my blend because they're so easy to get a beautiful watercoloring look. But I wanted to use the pencils. Um, I just thought this looked really nicely with the um, apple set. Okay, so let's build our cart. Like I said, I stamped a little bit over here. I'm going to grab my um, adhesive. And this I ran through my cotton emboss to get that nice embossed stitched whimsy. All right, so that's uh, kind of my base there. And now I'm going to use my Stampin' Dimensionals to pop up this piece that I ran through my Stampin' and Cut. Stampin' Cut Emboss. <laughs> and there we go. If I want, I'm going to grab some minis too. Sometimes these minis are good for little, the little spots. All right. And peel these off and have a party. Sometimes I just kind of throw them when I'm on camera. I actually got them in the garbage this time around. And I'm going to use this as a guide and layer that over. All right. Now you'll see this part comes off the edge of the card. And all I need to do is flip it over, grab my long bladed scissors, snip those off. And I'm actually going to snip off the stem. I'm going to leave that leaf because I like the look of the leaf. But I just trimmed the stem right there. You could leave it on if you wanted to. Now I have my sentiment that I am going to add. And I'm going to put my ribbon behind it. Let me grab my um, tear and tape because this is a little trick that I've learned. And I'm going to make a bow, try to make a bow with this little amount of, <laughs> the little amount of ribbon that I have. I ran out of it and my next next roll is not gonna be here till tomorrow, I was hoping. So we got a little baby, a baby bow there. And this is just the tear and tape that I always have on my desk and that way my ribbon is securely fastened grab my dimensionals again. I'm going to use the little ones actually here because they won't stick to that tear and tape backing. And I don't want too much bulk, so I kind of put my dimensionals around those things. The little mini dimensionals. And then I'm going to place this on my card and you see I have a leaf overlapping my sentiment there. All right, so beautiful card just like this, but I'm gonna add some uh, embellishments because I always like a little sparkle. These are some of my favorite new um, embellishments, the adhesive back seasonal sequins. They are in the July through December mini catalog. Uh, they remind me of, of some adhesive back sequins that we had in the annual catalog uh, last year. And I'm just going to add some white so just so I can have a little bit of sparkle. I'm going to take a big one and put it down here. I'm going to take two little ones because we always want to go in odd numbers and maybe put that there okay 
I don't know, sometimes I'm like, are three enough? Maybe I need five. Well, I have some, you know, I got a lot going on here. So I am just going to use three this time. But, you know, three or five always makes it a nice number. Now, I keep forgetting that I need to start stamping in my cards. I forget about that and adding a nice piece of uh, basic white on the inside so my recipient can read my card. So that is watercolor pencils without using um, any water with them with the apple blossoms dies along with the apple harvest now with the perfect partners you can get a 10 percent discount if you get the bundle which is the stamp set and the dies and these dies are only available until um, the end of september i want to point out the playful piggy dies which are going to be available through september with the this birthday piggy bundle if you purchase this bundle using um, our september hostess code I will send you the supplies to make three cards and you can join my um, birthday piggy live class on October 10th at 6.30 p.m. Okay, we can make those cards together. So just use this hostess code YWZD, I'm sorry, YW7, I skipped ahead, D-Z-A-R-C. Okay, and you can see these perfect partner bundles on the website as well. All right, something else we got going on in September. Stampin' Up! is having some weekly deals, and you can find these on Thursday when you go to my website, which is jmazer.stampinup.net. You can also find a link on my blog, and um, each, each Thursday, they're going to have different weekly deals. And these are just a nice little add-on. Like these brushed, but, brushed brass butterflies, that tongue twister. I thought those might look nice on this card too, but I did opt for the little sequence. And one last thing I want to talk to you about today is World Card Making Day, which is October 1st. And Stampin' Up! is holding a free virtual event. Um, you don't even need to register. Uh, we are using these three bundles to make cards. I'm actually going to be holding an in-person class the next week, so check my blog and my Facebook page for more information about that. Um, I do have a sample, where did it go, of my other swap card that I made. There it is. Um, for our backstage event, using the Cottage Rose bundle. It's such a beautiful stamp set, and there is coordinating paper along with it. But this one I watercolored with the uh, Stampin' Blends. So as you can see, a little bit of difference with the blends and the watercolor pencils. I like both looks, just depends on the look that you're going for. But I'm very excited about World Card Making Day using Cottage Rose and a couple new stamp sets. Um, one that is not even available in a catalog yet. But you can purchase these now so you can stamp along with us on October 1st. I'll have more information on my Facebook page. Thanks for joining me today for Lunch and Learn. Have a great day. Bye-bye.